guys, what's going on? My name is Pete and you're watching Phenomenal Creations and welcome back to the channel. It's so nice to see you again. Hope you guys all are doing well because today we're doing another very exciting Phenomenal Creations VFX tutorial from the Doctor Strange movie I was I watched a couple of days ago. It's very cool and I'm trying out the iconic time manipulation spell uh, thing going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's the part from the trailer to refresh your minds. This here's the bit. Okay, so that looks very cool. So let now let's check out my version of that exact same effect. So Awesome, so now I know how it looks like and now you want to go create it with me. Let's go ahead and do it together. So let's jump into Adobe After Effects and let's see how this VFX is pulled off. Hey guys and welcome to Adobe After Effects. Hope you guys are all eager to learn this awesome Doctor Strange VFX. And the best part of this tutorial, it's not that long and it's not so hard to do. Okay, let's go. So let's make a new composition with the footage I have provided down below. So the first thing to do is to trim the comp down to sequences and parts we can work with. And for the first we have to trim out the beginning and the end because I don't need that part. Now once the general cutting has been done, it's time to move for some specific trimming. Next we have to do some cuts for the actual effect, so let's go ahead and make some cuts where I'm opening up my hand and when I'm closing it. This is the area we do the actual effect on. So now as in many other tutorials we have to track our hands, we have to do some motion tracking. So let's just select the part we want to be affected and find from the tracker menu track camera. So we're activating a 3D camera track to happen here. Next we have to find a tracker point from our hands using the red target and the dots to find which is the best representation of the 3D plane of my hand. And once we have found that we create a null and a camera. So now let's go take a look at, at the element itself we're going to use it. So I'm going to jump in now to Photoshop and here's the element I created. Uh, circles and rectangles and text which are separated in individual layers and if, if you want this you can find it also downloadable in the description and if you don't have Photoshop I have a PA, PNG sequence for you provided. So after this we just bring it very simply into After Effects. Then we have to make sure the layers in the Photoshop file are editable inside a composition. This will automatically happen if you bring PSD files into After Effects. But if you have a PNG sequence like I've also provided, you can just pre-compose all the layers. Here's the basic, the same thing that just Photoshop has done it for you. Now we have to place the elements so it looks convincing on our hands. So I'm turning this to a multiply mode just for now so we can see through it. Then we turn 3D and then we have to align it with the pick whip tool holding the alt key to the 3D null so we can get the same 3D spacing as it as the null on the hand. And then we just use the arrow keys and have to position and scale it so it looks nice and cool on our hand. To really fine tune the position just change the rotation on the different axes a bit so it looks nice and cool so it really sticks to the hand. Then we jump into the spell comp and delete that bottom background layer, giving us the chance to change it back from multiply to normal, so we can still keep the transparency of the element, because we have to change it to another transfer mode pretty soon. To give the element some life, we have to add some rotation for the rectangles and the text. So look what I'm doing here. The After Effects got this cool trick, when I'm jumping between compositions, the cursor remains on that exact same position and this helps when I'm creating the keyframes. So what you do is to make a simple animation throughout that affected time period and put some different kind of values of degrees of a rotation. So one is 45, one is 90 and one is negative 70. So they move in different kind of directions with different kind of speeds. And also the text just moving around in rotation. 
Now it's time for add our next effect, it's the fractal noise effect. Now let's put it on the text layer so we can see the results as we're doing them at the best. The first thing to do is we can go ahead and bump up the scale so we can see the fractal noise effect taking place a bit better. Then all what we do is start playing with the contrast and the brightness so we're getting enough of these blacks and whites and grays because when we're putting on the next transfer mode the blacks gonna be transparent so let's make them look cool. Then change the type to dynamic progressive or any kind of look you feel like. And then you just animate the evolution so the next animation for this same uh, time period as the rotation animation we put some evolution there so something like 3x three times the evolution so we get some motion for that effect so it will look pretty cool in the end and after you have done that you copy the the fractal noise effect and paste it on every layer so not just the text layer on every layer so they all have that cool uh, fractal noise action going on and once we have added that fractal noise to give that some texture it's time to colorize this with the iconic green color so i'm going to use the plugin vc color vibrance from videocopilot.net it's free and they have nothing to do with this episode just a disclaimer if you want it the, the details are down below and once you have picked the right color for you you can play with the gamma and the vibrance to give the look that you want after that we go and change the transfer mode to screen and the screen property will do to, to get rid of all the blacks and make the blacks transparent this gives the iconic um, semi-transparent look for the whole effect and at this point your computer if it doesn't have enough computing power it starts to slow down so in my case it really does so now we're gonna do a create a new viewer as I've shown it before in previous tutorials just to have two compositions open simultaneously so when I open up the element comp I can modify it and see the direct results to them the final composition on the left and now we're doing like just the final tweaking if you want to change the fractal noise properties and everything just to give more transparency or less transparency and stuff so now we go ahead and create a glow effect. So let's bring the glow to our comp and let's give some values. We put some of the threshold, some from the 12 to 15 and put the radius up to like a super high number, like 250 to just give that cool ambience, cool glow. Then our hand also needs some glow. So let's create a solid and cold whatever we want and change the color to something like really light green because the glowing of the effect has to affect our hand too. We create an optical mask and turn 3D. And once we have done that, we pattern it to uh, the element layer with the Alt key as we did in the uh, beginning. And then we just place it with the arrow, arrow buttons to the right place. And then we find the fast blur effect to blur it out to give it some like ambience, like kind of glow going on. Then we change to the add transfer mode just to give it some more highlights and contrast. Then we can go to the mask properties and bump up the feathering and after that we can maybe dial down the fast blur a bit and play with the mask feathering so we get the look we deserve for this effect okay so we have one thing or a couple things to do let's go ahead and create with the opacity animation just like a very few frames uh, duration long uh, fade in and fade out for the, both um, the element itself when we're playing with our hands and also um, to the hand glow itself so we have it like this very fast fading and very fast fade out uh, for the effect so it gives some realism for the hand movement and then we just add a color grade and that's it and here's what we got Thanks for sticking around, hope you guys did like the tutorial and if you did, don't forget to give me a like below this video and a dislike if you didn't like it. Also drop down a comment in the comment section, I also read all the comments, they're super important and just tell me what you thought of this project. 
and also in the description you can find my footage I used and also my Google form and if you go ahead and click on that hyperlink it will bring you to my Google form and you can go there suggest to suggest any kind of tutorial you want to see on this channel so you can be a part of the creative process on this very channel that's super cool so there's a lot of tutorials who have been suggested by you guys so go there suggest and I'll start working on them right away and if you want to see more of this kind of content you want to see how this develops we're soon at 20,000 it's super awesome super exciting hit the subscribe button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we're gonna make this something super big so thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next video next week probably so hey have a good one I'll see you